Hi, I'm Chad from Alta3. I am RHCSA certified, and I want to make sure that you are too. What we're going to take a look at are three different potential tasks that can come up on the exam that if you don't get them just right, could massively impact your score, potentially causing you to fail outright. Timestamps are down inside of the description, and while you're there, make sure you hit like, smash that subscribe button, cause here we go! The first and most critical task that we're going to learn how to tackle is how to reset the root password. Why is this so important? Well, imagine on your exam that you have two machines, and on this machine, you are expected to complete tasks one, two, and three. On the other machine, you're expected to complete tasks four, five, and six, about 50-50. Here's the problem. This machine is locked. You don't have the root password, which means if you can't get past that, you cannot complete tasks four, five, and six, and that's an automatic 50% fail. Unacceptable. Let's figure out how we can get around this. Hey, so what we're in right now is the Alta 3 training platform. And what I am in right this moment is the command line where we are actually going to be interrupting the boot process for recovery. So let me get this command line full screen and we can get started. So on the exam, there will be buttons that allow you to reboot your machine. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna go ahead and reboot. And once we get to, this is called the grub menu, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to select our kernel, which is the first one right there, press the letter E, takes you to this screen right here. What you're going to do is you're going to arrow down to that line there that starts with Linux. And the easiest thing to do is just hold down that right arrow key until you get all the way to the end of the line there. And this is where you're going to type in RD break. This is going to interrupt the boot process, which is going to allow us to quote unquote, hack our system and get it working. If you press control X, that'll get us to boot. All right, and you can see that we are now in emergency mode, which is exactly where we wanna be. Here are the following commands that you need to enter. Mount, output, remount, read, write, sys root. Then we're gonna run chroot slash sysroot. That's gonna bring our root file system back online. You should see your command line change. So here's the part where we're actually gonna change the password itself, passwd. When you hit enter, it's gonna prompt you for a password. Use whatever password you are told to use for the password. I'm gonna use the password for the greatest training company on earth, ALTA3. Take my word for it. I am definitely typing that in. It won't show up. All right, looks good. But don't forget this next step. Make sure that you run this touch command. It's gonna create a file called auto relabel. That is going to, when your system boots, see that that file exists. And it's just going to make sure that your SE Linux security setup boots the way that it's supposed to. Done here. So you can exit out of being ch root, hit reboot, and I'll see you back when we're done going through this. One eternity later. Oops, fat fingered it. All right, time for the moment of truth. Logging in as root, password, all to three. Should Daisy, my strong advice to you is that you are able to do this with pure muscle memory, repetition. You need a lab environment where you can practice this, and Alta 3 is all too happy to provide you with one. Next, and this is a small task, but cannot be overstated, how to add yum repositories. Thing is, is that you cannot just assume that every tool that you need is going to be installed on your machine. And here's a list of a whole bunch that could come up. Also, what you can't assume is, is that the Red Hat exam is gonna be nice and friendly and oh, make sure that all those packages are available to install. No, you may have to add those repositories in order to install them. And if you can't install them, you can't solve the tasks. Can't solve the tasks. Well, you see where I'm getting at with that. So fortunately, this is really easy to learn. Let's take a look at how it's done. So what does it take to add a repository? Well, let's take a look at the mock exam portion of our lab environment to see what a question like this may look like. See that URL up there? You'll be given one pretty much just like it, and you'll be expected to add that as a yum repository. Here's by far the easiest way to go about doing that. 
All right, we're just gonna do sudo yum install. You can use DNF install if you are looking to be fancy about it. But now I'm just going to grab that URL, paste it down there at the command line. And there you have it. That has just added the Apple release repository. Now, of course, you're always going to want to verify that this stuff is applied after you're done. So if you run the yum repo list command, I can see whoop, we have successfully managed to add that. Something that's new to the RHCSA is Podman, the Docker knockoff. And you might already be at a disadvantage here because maybe you've never worked with containers before. But what you're also at a disadvantage is, is that the way that the exam may be structured. So imagine this, that you have a task where you have to create an image from a container file. And then the very next task is, is that you need to make a container with that image you made inside of the previous lab. And then in the third task, you may have to launch that container as a systemd service. Obviously, if you fail at tasks one or two, then you are automatically going to fail at tasks two and three. Once again, unacceptable. I'm gonna make sure that we walk through this and you guys can tackle this when it's your turn. So those are our three tasks laid out before us. Let's get cracking. You won't have to write the container file yourself. That'll already be provided. But when the time comes for you to use Podman, Podman, never heard of them. You probably will have to install this. Just do a yum install Podman and let her cook. All right, and that's done. Now, all that you need to know is what is the correct command to make an image. That is Podman build. Now on your task, you're probably going to be given a name that you're supposed to give the image. So dash T for tag, let's just call this rel demo, and then provide the path to where the container file is located. Bink, it's right here inside of my current directory. So let's pull the trigger on this. So always double check your work and run a podman images command and we can see there it is, rel demo ready to rock. And now we need to build a container using that image. A lot of podman commands you gotta know, but hey, it is what it is. Podman run is how you start a new container. Dash D means detached or daemonized. It's gonna run it in the background. Make sure that you include that or you're gonna have a bad time. Dash P stands for ports and there are two different ports that you provide. The X port is the local host port. Like where on your Red Hat machine are you going to go in order to access the container? The second port, which is Y, is the port number in the container itself. That is absolutely written in stone. Since we're basing this on Nginx, that happens to be port 80. But pretty much any port will go, but you have to go with what they ask you to use on the exam. So let's say 24601, and let's be dramatic about it. Dash dash name, here we can put whatever it is the name of the container is. So let's call it rel demo container. And then last but not least, you need to provide what is the name of the image itself, which I'm just gonna copy right out of there, pop it in there, pull the trigger and nice. And once that's done, you can run the sudo podman ps command to see that your container has been made successfully. And now on to the final task. We've made our image, we've built a container with it, but now we're expected to start it as a systemd service. And systemd services are defined by service files. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about how to make one of those. Just run this command, podman generate systemd. Now this is assuming that your container is already up and running, like ours is. Then just put the name of the container and then follow it up with a dash dash files command. And you're gonna get this all oh, deprecated. Blah, 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 blah. Just ignore that because this is absolutely going to work. If we check our directory here, you can see that there is our file and we are going to move that file and place it inside of our Etsy system D system directory with all of the other service files. Now, here is the thing about doing that. 
something you do need to know for the exam is uh, SE Linux contexts. And you can see that all of these files that were here originally had the systemd unit file T context. But our boy that we just moved in here, yeah, he doesn't. Fortunately, that is easy enough to fix. Here's what you have to do. Use the restore context command. And what that's gonna do is that it's going to take our little service file here and it's going to restore it to the default context of the directory. So when we check this again, you can see that now it's fitting in with its new friends and it's in the correct context. If you fail to do this, there is going to be a problem when the time comes to initiate this as a service. Run a system control daemon reload. That's what's going to enable us to kick in that service file that we added. And now we can give it system control commands just like we would any other service. Just remember that the name of the service is going to be container dash followed by whatever the name of your container is. So if you get this symlink output, that means that your service is now enabled. That means it should come online every time you reboot. Another super nasty detail of the Red Hat exam is, is that you can make perfect changes but if they don't survive after reboot, then you are not going to get credit for taking that uh, action. So make sure that you start it as well. Again, container dash, and just for good measure, you can always follow it up with a status check. Always verify your work would be my absolute law of taking the exam. And we can see that it is enabled, it is running, and we have succeeded at this third and final Podman task. So there you have it. There's lots more to learn for the RHCSA, but those are three of the biggest gotchas. And gang, if you want to pass this test, you really have to get your hands dirty. You need a genuine red hat environment. You need labs and videos that are actually designed to get you to pass the exam. In other words, you need all of these things from one place, which you can get at Alta 3. Check out the link down inside of the description. Best of luck and crush that RHCSA exam.